Hey, what's up, Divine Ones? It's Latoya O'Kill. Welcome back to another video, baby. I want to encourage you today on this video to hold to your vision. Hold to your vision. If there's something that the Lord has placed in your heart, there's a vision that you have. You keep seeing yourself doing this thing and in your vision, you are so happy and you are so full of life and so full of love and so full of joy and you're serving a purpose in somebody else's life. You're bringing meaning to somebody else's life. You keep seeing yourself doing this thing and just becoming the person that God has created you to become whatever your vision is and however way you see yourself helping people and serve in your community and in your generation, I want you to hold to that. I don't want you to don't ever let that go. I hear God saying, don't cast away your faith which is your confidence in God. I want y'all to affirm this today. I want you to put this in the comments. Say, I am confident in God. I am confident in God. And I want to let you know that this is where your confidence is going to come from. Your confidence is not within yourself, but your confidence is in God. It is in Jesus Christ. It is in the spirit of God that's on the inside of you. And you got to know that his spirit is with you, baby. You got to know that he will never leave you and that he will never forsake you. And he says that I will be with you always. I want you to affirm that as well, baby. As you watch this video today, go down there in the comments right now, baby. Say, God is with me. God is with me. I hear him saying, baby, just as, just as he spoke in the word in the scriptures, he says, when you pass through the water, I will be with you. When you're going through the things in life, when you're going through different trials and tribulations, I hear him saying, I am with you. When you're crying, when you sliding down the wall doing the ugly cry, I hear him saying that I am with you. He says, even when you pass through the fire, baby, he said a fire will not burn you. I have said this before on some of my other videos, and I'm going to say it to y'all today. God spoke to me in my spirit one day, and he told me, he said, don't you be afraid of the enemy. Don't you be afraid of the fiery darts that the enemy is throwing at you because he said how can fire burn fire nothing that the enemy throws at you none of his fiery darts that he throw at you can even harm you can even hurt you because you have the divine fire of god burning on the inside of you how can fire burn fire so you got to know who you are baby you got to know your identity your identity i want y'all to write that word down get your journal Y'all know how we do. You a divine one. Come on now. Get your journal. Get your blue ink pen. And I want you to write that word down. Identity. Identity. And then right up under that word, I want you to write, Who does God say I am? Who does God say I am? And then I want you to begin to search the scriptures. Go on Google if you need to, baby. And I want you to pull up every single scripture that answers that question of who does God say I am? What does God say about me? And then I want you to start speaking that over your life. The word of God tells us that we have to call those things that be not as though they were. So even though you may not add up to those things that God says you are, you currently physically in the flesh, you don't feel like you are any of those things, you begin to speak these things over yourself. So you tell yourself and you write it down as well in your journal with your blue ink pen and you get up every day, you go to your mirror, you look in the mirror, look in your eyes, look into the windows of your soul and tell yourself, I am chosen. I am a chosen one. I am a royalty. I am a royal priesthood. I am a child of God. I am a child of a king, which makes me royalty. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. You speak these things over yourself. You tell yourself, I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things. I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You speak these things over yourself and you write your vision down. This vision that you keep seeing in your mind, you keep seeing yourself serving a purpose in somebody's life and adding value to other people's lives. I want you to write that down. The word of God also tells us to write the vision and make it plain. Whatever is in your mind, baby, I want to let you know that it's in the spiritual realm. It is in the realm that cannot be seen with the physical eye. 
But in order for you to bring this thing into existence, in order for God to bring it into fruition in your life so that other people can see it and it can show up and help people the way you envision it, helping people, you got to sit down and you got to do the first step. What is the first step? When you write it down. This is a divine principle of success. In order for the vision to come into fruition, it has to first be written down on paper. So your goals mean nothing as long as they're in your head. They just, they're just wishes. You just wishing you could do this. You just hoping you could do this. You can do that. It doesn't, it doesn't become real. It doesn't come into the physical world until you get a piece of paper, you get an ink pen and you write it down. This is a divine principle of success. And anybody that has became successful, truly successful in anything in life, they had to they had to do this principle. They had to get in line with this principle. You got to write it down. So what is it that you're seeing? What is your vision? What is your vision? What is something that you can think of yourself doing and it brings a smile on your face? It warms your heart. It warms your spirit. You feel good while doing it. It changes your mood. Every time you think about this thing, it changes your mood. Every time you envision this and you see yourself doing this and being this and having this and going here and going there, how does it make you feel? Does it lighten your mood? Does it change the atmosphere around you? Does it make you smile? Make you feel warm inside? Make you feel like you're fulfilling a purpose when you're in that moment, in that vision? I want to let you know that that's God, baby. That is God speaking to you. As long as it is good and it is inside of the will of God, it doesn't go against his word and it doesn't go against his laws and his principles and it serves a purpose in somebody else's life, that's God. And you got to take action. The first step to taking action is to write it down. To write it down. You got to write it. So first you think it. You think it in your mind. You envision it. You see it. You feel it. And then you write it, you think it, you write it. I did a video about this. Um, I forgot the name of it, but I'm going to link it below in the description of this video. But I did a whole video about this where I gave you the five keys to unlock your next level or something like that. It was five keys. And I remember I was saying that you got to think it, you got to write it, you got to speak it. So after you have thought of the vision in your mind and you have written it down on paper, you got to begin speaking it. You got to start speaking these things into existence. You got to start talking like it's already here. You got to start thanking God, praising God like it's already here. And then you got to start aligning your life, aligning your life with, with the habits and the behavior patterns and the personality traits and the people and the places and the things that support this vision. So you can't be thinking one thing, writing, writing that thing, speaking that thing, and then you have friends that, that are not in alignment with that. You in relationships that are not in alignment with that. You have habits that you are doing every day that are not in alignment with that because your habits will ultimately make you or break you. I want y'all to put that in the comments and write that down in your journal. Say habits will either make you or break you. So you got to start taking inventory of your habits. What are your habits like? What do you get up and do every day? Because we are creatures of habit. We're going to get up and do the same things, most of the same things every day. We're going to think the same type of thoughts every day. So you got to start taking inventory. What am I thinking about? Yeah. What am I watching? What am I reading? Who am I talking to? Yeah. What am I doing? How am I talking? What words are coming out of my mouth? What do I do every day? What do I get? When I get up in the morning, what's the first thought that comes to my mind after I wake up? What is, what is in my heart to go and do? What are the habits that I have that I do every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year? You're doing the same thing around this time of year. You're doing the same thing around this time of the day. You need to write all of those habits down, take inventory. And then you got to start looking at those habits and saying, are these habits in alignment with my vision? Are they in alignment with the purpose that God has for my life? And are they in alignment with my identity? Remember, we wrote that word at the top of the paper, identity. Are these habits in alignment with my identity, my spiritual identity? Who does God say I am? So my, my behavior patterns, my habits, am I behaving like royalty? Am I thinking like that? Am I speaking like that? Am I connecting with other people who support that? 
or people that are taking me back to the road that I just came off of that I prayed and asked God to take me out of that season. Because I hear God saying that this is the season, this is the time where you're going to connect with people that look like your future. They look like where you're going, not where you came from. Because we ain't going backwards in the kingdom of God. The word lets us know that anybody that puts their hand to the plow and they look back, they not fit for the kingdom of God. And that simply means that when you commit, when you make a commitment to God, when you make a commitment to yourself, you can't go back. You can't go back because there is nothing good left back there for you. If it was, you would have never made the commitment to get up out of there. You got to start asking yourself, why did I leave in the first place? Why did I leave? Why did I stop dealing with that person in the first place? Why did I stop going to that place in the first place? Why did I ask, why was I even crying out to God asking him to deliver me from that behavior pattern or from that personality trait in the first place? You got to remember the facts. Remember the facts so you'll never go back because God has a new life for you. I want y'all to put that in the comments. We got to go, but put that in the comments real quick, baby. Say, God has a new life for me. I can't continue to be broke, busted, and disgusted and sit in this season that I'm in. Why? Because God has a new life for me. So I want you to receive the new life that God has for you. Any man that is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things become new. This is a season of newness for you. This is a season of new life, new experiences, new friends, new people, new places, new habits that support the new life, that support the new identity. The identity that has actually always been you, but you was living in a lie up until the point that you heard the truth. I hear God saying that this is the season where many of his chosen ones that have been living in a lie, you will wake up to your true divine identity and you will begin to align your life and your habits and your traits and your friends and your relationships and everything else that's in your life. You will begin to align it with the purpose and the vision that God has for you. I want you to hold to your vision. I don't want you to give up. Don't give up, baby. If it's not in your life right now, it's simply because you have more becoming to do. You got to become. You got to keep working on you. You got to keep investing in you. The kingdom of God is within you. So the more you develop, the more you grow, the more you learn, the more you build the kingdom, the more you advance the kingdom of God. Okay? I love you all so much, baby. I love y'all with everything in me. I am Latoya O'Keel. Remember, if you have not gotten your seat for our Atlanta conference, Divine Ones, listen up. Go tell everybody you know. I'm going to be in Atlanta, Georgia on April the 8th, 2023. We're going to be in downtown Atlanta. The tickets are below. Click the link in the description right now. Listen, Early Bird is about to end, y'all. The seats are limited. Last conference I did, people was, was emailing in, trying to get in, and I had to close it because we had reached capacity. We was full. So I'm promoting and I'm pushing it and I'm pushing it because everybody that is spirit-led to be in that room, I want you to have an opportunity to get in that room. Do not wait until the last minute. Listen to me. Get in the room. Go below. Click the link in the description and get your tickets right now. We still have VIP tickets available and we have early bird general admission tickets available, okay? Go ahead and sign up, baby. I'm telling you, when you get in the room, you're gonna get that transformation that you need. It's something about being physically in the room where you can physically feel the anointing. You will not leave out the same way you came in. It's the season and it's the time for the divine ones to ascend, baby. You're going higher and higher in the kingdom of God. And when you get in that room, you're going to get the spiritual tools that you need, the keys to be successful, to create that transformation that you've been waiting for all your life. I'm telling you, baby, it's going to be next level. Okay, so click the link. If you have not done so, do it now. Because Early Bird will be closing soon and the ticket prices will go up. So go ahead and sign up now. And I pray that I get an opportunity to see you in the room so that you can feel the energy, feel the anointing. I'm telling you, baby, it's strength in numbers. And when we come together for the kingdom of God, amazing things happen. You're going to be in the room with other like-minded individuals. So many of you, I have heard my divine one say, Toya, this is a lonely walk. I don't have anybody to talk to. I don't have anybody to connect 
connect with. My family don't understand me. Y'all know the chosen one ain't welcome in his own hometown. But listen, when you get in this room, you're going to meet with other divine ones. You're going to meet me, but you're going to also see your family. Jesus said, who is my family? My family is those that do my father's will. So when y'all get in the room, don't get in there like strangers, baby, because this is family. I want y'all to understand that purpose led you to that room. Destiny led you to that room. These are people from all over the world that are coming together on one accord for the kingdom of God. Oh, I feel that. That thing going to be so powerful. And I want you to be a part of it. Okay, so click the link below and sign up. Replay this video, get the message, get the value from it because there was so much value in this video. Listen, we had a full coaching session. We just did a coaching session. If you go back with your journal, your blue ink pen, and you listen to the keys and the knowledge and you get the spiritual tools and you do the work that I told you to do, you're going to see success and you're going to see transformation, baby. Because we just had a full out coaching session on this 15 minute video. God is able to do it if you if you willing to do the work. Okay, I want y'all to put that in the comments, baby. I'm gonna go down there in the comments and see who made it to the end of the video and who gonna do the work. Put that in the comments, baby. Say, I'm doing the work, Toya. I'm doing the work. I am committed to doing the work on myself. Because when you work on yourself, you're working on the kingdom of God. Did you know that? The kingdom of God is within you. It's not out there. It's not a physical place or a physical building. The kingdom is within you. So when you do the work on you, when you're building you, when you're developing you, you're building the kingdom of God. You're developing the kingdom of God. This is how the kingdom will advance when we start working on ourselves and we start working to become the men and the women of God that God created us to be. Okay, so I love you so much and I'll check in with y'all later.